Welcome everyone to our next round of eighth grade inspiration speeches. Um, this year we asked eighth graders to think about who they're inspired by, what they're passionate about or what they believe in, and also the lessons they learned here at Swain and what they want to pursue in the future. So these are speeches um, that weave those themes together. So you're going to hear about hopes and dreams as well as lessons learned here. Um, each of our speakers also has a takeaway question for you. So um, as you're listening to speeches, please think of questions that you have for your presenters because we'll have a Q&A at the end. All right, so our first presentation. So we're going to have, I think we're going to start off with Derek Feliciano. So let's give a round of applause for Derek. Siblings, oh. sibling, is this on? <laughs> Siblings are like branches of a tree. We grow in different directions, yet our roots remain as one. Who inspires you for the most? For some, it may be a teacher or a parent, or maybe it's a really popular celebrity. For me, it's someone who I've grown up with and someone who I've been with my my entire life. Hello, my name is Derek Feliciano, and this is why my sister is the person that inspires me the most. Growing up with a sibling is very challenging at times, but it is also very beneficial in learning how to live in general. They have more responsibilities and experience in you, and in a way, they're kind of like your test dummy. They experience it before you, and then depending on what happens, you go towards or steer clear of the outcome when you eventually get to that point. They can give you advice and their opinions on what to do, how to do things better, what to do, or what not to do. When picking my inspiration, I had our time. I couldn't come up with any ideas. I decided to reflect and I thought about people who have made the biggest impacts on me. I thought about many people, my parents. I thought a lot about my aunts, my uncles, but one person kept on coming to mind. It was my older sister, Julie, who's been with me since the minute I was born to this very moment, always by my side. She's made a huge impact on my life and who I am today. Julie inspires me because she works hard and is dedicated to everything she puts her mind to. When she has a goal, whether it has to do with volleyball or school, uh, it, it's completed sooner rather than later. She always helps me and tells me what she would have done in her situation if I had a problem. She's also kind, but harsh and firm with her criticism. Because she's so brutally honest, she's, she, never feels this, she never fails to speak the truth, it's, even when it hurts. It helps me to not lie to myself when the truth is needed for improvement. She's super smart and able to help me with most of the problems I face and puts a lot of effort into her work and puts just as much effort into helping other people. When she has a problem, she always faces it, and when she can't, she's never afraid to help She's never afraid to ask for help, whether it's from a teacher, a parent, or a friend. She's very open about her feelings and always has something to share. She manages her time very well, which is something I fail to do. Even though, even though it's hard for her, she's still able to find time to hang out with her friends and family while, st while still keeping up with her schoolwork. She even comes to me whenever I'm at her campus, even if she has somewhere to be. Sometimes it gets very stressful for her. It can be very overwhelming at times, but she never stops being a good sister. Julie is very smart, puts a lot of time in her school her time and effort in her schoolwork and tries to improve every day. She takes classes that are very challenging for her, 
and always tries to keep up. She's always putting time aside to schedule meetings with her teachers when she needs to go over a topic that she's a little bad at. When a friend needs help, she always helps them, and they always help her in return. Her friends always regard her as one of the best friends they've ever had. I noticed this at a sweet 16 when she had the privilege of being one of the few people to light a candle, which symbolized her importance to her friend's life. The reasons were that they were always there for her, helping her with challenging tasks and decisions. She likes to volunteer to help people, even if it's going to be challenging. She's gone on two medical missions to the Dominican Republic and has helped hundreds of kids who don't have the luxury of having doctors to help them. She would wake up early and help for hours at a time, and when she was tired, she still found time to call me to tell her how her trip was going. Julie is smart, hardworking, caring, and a friendly person, and an even better older sister. Siblings are like people who we practice on. The people who teach us about fairness, cooperation, kindness, and caring. Quite often the hard way. Growing up would have been a lot harder without Julie. She's always there for me when I need her, and I wouldn't be the same person without her. Thank you. Great. Our next presenter is Marcus Chimaco. Hard work, the key to success. Did you know that 91% of employers prefer to promote an employee who demonstrates hard work over those who demonstrate talent? Hello, my name is Marcus Schmacko. I am a student athlete and I love playing hockey. I've been playing hockey for 10 years trying to master my craft and eventually want to play professional hockey. I decided to learn to, to skate when one of my teachers here at Swain challenged my class to do something new in 3K. When I first started playing hockey, I immediately realized I was not the best and needed a lot of improvement. So I asked myself, how do I get better at hockey to become the best? My answer was hard work. I firmly believe that hard work will make you successful over time. American author Robert Collier said, success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. Hard work has always been critical in trying to master hockey. I've always gone to the gym, shot pucks in my basement, and stick handled on my roller skates to try to get better at skills that I was ter terrible at. Hard work has helped me achieve goals. My teachers here at Swain challenged me to work hard and be an enthusiastic learner. For that, I am grateful. Hard work has also helped me achieve goals academically and athletically. For example, I am not the greatest at taking tests, but I am good at doing homework. Even if it's difficult, tedious, and takes time, I work hard and put an effort into my homework because the test results will improve. Doing little things like investing in yourself and always doing homework will help you achieve your goals. For example, I set a goal for myself when I was around eight years old. This goal was to get into a good prep school. I wanted to do this because it would help me become a better hockey player and increase my knowledge. So I invested time and effort into getting good grades, becoming a good hockey player through hard work and discipline, and the support of my family, friends, and teachers here today. I have now met the goal of attending a prep school this fall. Personal growth. Hard work has helped me grow. From hard work, I got stronger, smarter, and more athletic. Hockey is a physical sport. People will hit you as hard as possible to get the puck. When I was younger, one of my biggest problems was losing the puck. So to become better at controlling the puck, I became stronger than them by going to the gym. From this, I grew as a hockey player and a person by gaining muscle mass and finesse with the puck. As I said earlier, one of my goals was to get into a good prep school. Over time, I took little steps working hard to achieve that goal. One of my steps was maintaining good grades uh, as a student here at Swain. So, how did I do this? I would do every homework assignment, study for tests to maximize results, and try comprehending what we did in class. Over time, the consistent amount of effort and work you put into reaching your goal will help you gain one of the most valuable skills known as self-discipline. Self-discipline is control gained through dedication with a focus of improving yourself and the people around you. This hard work and effort you have put into meeting your goals will also be training your discipline and mastering your skill. A prime example of this is skating. This is a good example because you are doing something repeatedly and improving each time you do it. 
Through self-discipline, you can improve and obtain many valuable skills, such as being overall more successful, having order in your life, and being accountable. Being a hard worker can teach you many valuable skills and lessons you can use in your life. Many people recognize the value of hard work. So before I end my speech, I would like to ask you guys a question. Do you think you put enough effort into where you are or you're planning to be? And if not, what can you do better and how much more effort do you have to put in? Thank you. All right, our next presenter is Duncan McIntosh. Act with kindness, but do not expect gratitude. Confucius. Hi, my name is Duncan McIntosh, and I'm here today to speak about how my mom, Allison McIntosh, inspires me. My mom is the kindest person I know and never expects anything from people in return. She never fails to be cheerful and helpful whenever people need it. This can be seen as, seen as she devoted her life to becoming a doctor in order to help people and save their lives. Her kindness was really shown to me when once when a patient was struggling to pay their bills, she got her colleagues together to help them pay their bills. One of her most inspiring qualities is her de devotion to the people she loves and cares about. My mom always takes off work early to pick up me and my sister and spend time with us, and always visits and supports my grandparents and makes sure they're all right. She moved to the Lehigh Valley in order to be close to them. She even had a place in Virginia, but she gave that up so that she could make help her parents when they were older. Another one of her many inspiring qualities is her deep respect for people. She never says people are wrong or gets mad when people disagree. Instead, she says things as she sees them and never fails to hear everyone's point of view. My mom also never raises her voice at people and treats everyone with respect no matter their social status, beliefs, or education. For example, my sister, when my sister decided to go vegetarian, she cooked two meals at a time so that my sister could have a vegetarian version of whatever we were having at the time. She truly understands that everyone's opinion is valuable and that everyone has the potential for something great. This belief that everyone has a purpose has inspired me to look deeper in myself and think about what I can do for the world. My mom will always inspire me to do community service and help be helpful to everyone around me, even if that's just holding a door. One of her most inspiring qualities, though, is her understanding and compassion. Even if I'm having a horrible day and I'm being mean to people around me, she understands that I'm having a hard time and tries to cheer me up. She'll always push me to do well, but never gets mad when I slip up. Instead, she tries to help me figure out how I can do better next time. My mom is a person who doesn't mind doing more than others when they are having a hard time. Whenever I'm having a hard time, I know I can always go to my mom because she understands no matter what happens. She always inspires me to be as understanding as possible and to try to set aside previous grudges and animosity. And because as she taught me, it always helps to have someone there. Whenever I have a hard time, I know my mom is there. My mom inspires me to do something, to be helpful instead of standing on the sidelines waiting for someone else to take the burden. She's inspired me the most helpful person I can and always volunteer to do things. I'm inspired to do something in life to help people, not to make money. My mom is also an activist who never fails to support the climate crisis. She'll not do something to help just because it costs money. In fact, she spent $300 to get trees for the school one year. She's inspired me to do something about climate change in my life as well. I've started trying to eat less meat because of her, and now I want to base my future career on helping both the environment and people. Of all the amazing traits that I have listed, though, the one that is most important is her compassion. Even her love of the environment is a form of compassion as she works for a cleaner future. I said that everyone has a love language, that once you understand, you can truly know them. I know my mom's love language now, and her love language is compassion. Her compassion to those she cares about, her compassion to the world, to animals, even to random people. So as I leave the podium, I think that's important that you consider this. Who are you there for? Can you truly say that if someone was having a hard time, that you would be there for them? That you'd be compassionate no matter what they're going through? And if not, then figure out how you can be there for them, because then they'll be there for you. So thank you. All right, our last presenter for today is Henry Sprague.
Hello, I'm Henry Sprague, and I'm here to present my inspirations. Are there any people in your life who manage to inspire and influence you every day? Are there any people in your life who are so important you can't imagine it without them? I have two people in my life who fit that criteria perfectly. My dads, Ted and Kevin. In addition to talking about them today, I will also talk about how I've been inspired to find a career I love. All of my classmates know Kevin. He's everyone's favorite substitute teacher. Some of my friends think he's intimidating or even scary. Well, I might have to agree. <laughs> but this is really just on the surface. In reality, he's a very loving person who cares so much for his family and others. In fact, he's probably weeping right now. He works hard to help me thrive, and I owe a lot of my accomplishments to him and his support of me. He always encourages me to see the positive sides of things. Whenever I ask him something like, what if this does not go well? Or, what if I do not succeed? His response is always the same. Well, what if it does go well? What if you do succeed? While I think of him as a very stylish person who has taught me to care more about my appearance, perhaps his best characteristic, the characteristic that has influ influenced me the most, is how incredibly funny he is. As far as I'm concerned, his dry humor and sarcasm are unmatched, much to the frustration of Ted, which amuses me to no end. Like Kevin, Ted is also pretty funny, but in a different, unintentional way, and he's also inspiring to me in different ways. He has certainly given me his fun. When I was four, he began personally teaching me how to ski, which became the basis of many of our adventures throughout the years. From hell skiing in the Rocky Mountains to paragliding over the Alps, he still has the curiosity of a child in this way, which is something I greatly admire. In fact, Kevin refers to me as his youngest and Ted as his oldest. But there is a serious side to Ted. He is more hardworking and determined than anyone you will ever meet. I have and always will admire that. He has had several successful businesses, but what I most admire is that he turned one of his biggest passions, flying, into one of them. This has inspired me to want to follow in his footsteps and also find a career doing something I love. More specifically, Ted's business is charter flying, which most people assume is people hiring airplanes and pilots for travel. Although this is certainly one purpose, there's a different, more important aspect of the business that I find very compelling. Private charters are the main way that transplanted human organs make it to their destinations quickly. Patients who require replacement of organs such as lungs, liver, pancreas, or even the heart need those vital organs to arrive almost as soon as they become available. My dad has transported over 100 organs, often in the middle of the night, saving countless lives. In 2023, 43,000 organs were transplanted, and that would not have been possible without charter planes that can arrive within minutes of a phone call. If that's not inspiring, I don't know what is. So yes, my dads have always been the greatest influences and inspirations in my life and have helped me become the person I am and the person I hope to be. I am inspired by Kevin's humor, attention to detail, and care for others. I'm inspired by Ted's youthful sense of adventure, drive to succeed, and for making me realize that it's really important to do something with your life that you feel passionately about, and even better if you can help improve the world while doing it. Finally, I would like to say that, of course, I am in awe of their ability to raise a perfect child. I am also in awe of their wonderful 31-year relationship, and I hope to be as lucky someday. Thank you for listening. I love you, dads. Can I have all of my presenters come up and stand right by the podium? Let's give another round of applause. All right, so now we'd love to get some questions from the audience. Um, when you ask your question, please make sure it's directed to maybe the whole group and everybody will answer or at least one presenter. All right, questions. Levi. What was your favorite part about the inspiration speech? So each of you will respond to that. Um, I like making slideshows, so uh, I thought making the slides were fun uh, because like, I got to just make it about my life and like, what, I, what I do and what I'm passionate about. 
kind of similar to Marcus. I liked finding the photos for my slides because there were a lot, it brought back a lot of memories and nostalgia. I, uh, I also liked finding the photos for my slides. It also brought back many memories. My favorite part was uh, reflecting on who my inspiration would be and choosing that. Maya? So the whole presentation. All right. So, so how about everybody come up? So how long did it take each of you to deliver and practice and practice the whole thing? Uh, for me, it took about four weeks. Uh, Two of them practicing and two of them actually making them. It took me about three weeks, um, pretty much just two weeks to make it, but about a week of practice and stressing. It took me about three to four weeks, just two weeks practicing and one week, and one to two weeks making it. It took me about five weeks in total, two to make it, and three practicing. And so we go through a very long process of brainstorming and writing down a lot of ideas, and then they start crafting their speech within that month. So it's about the last two months of eighth grade year. Questions? Owen. Um, so obviously I did something I am passionate about. I'm very passionate about hard work, but Somebody who inspires me the most is probably my mom because she fought really hard and uh, she uh, works really hard for herself. Inspiration speeches. Um, we have one more week of speeches next week. Um, and then for our families who came, could you please stay and we can take some pictures in front of the presentation. Um, if you are a sixth grader, I'd like you to go out to the courtyard. Can you wait one moment? 